Are you ready for a quick hitter 21 honest things to know about Fort Collins coming from somebody born and raised in Fort Collins and has spent his entire 35, almost 36 years, less nine months in Northwest Loveland in Fort Collins, Colorado. So let's jump right into it. My name is Patrick Sukup. This is the Living in Fort Collins YouTube channel where you come to learn everything there is to know about Fort Collins, eating, sleeping, working, and 21 honest things to maybe make big time decisions about moving to Northern Colorado, Fort Collins, moving away, buying, selling, or investing. And if you happen to find yourself on that path, give me, my team, a call, text, or email. We are licensed real estate agents in the state of Colorado and would love to be an asset on your team. Now, let's jump into the 21 honest truths about Fort Collins, Colorado. Here we go. All right, you've heard the stories, you've heard the rumors, and yes, Harper Goff from Fort Collins helped Walt Disney as an inspiration for Main Street Disneyland in Disneyland, California. So if you go there and you recognize some of the buildings, the old firehouse bookstore, among others in Fort Collins, could kind of resemble each other. So when you walk through Fort Collins and you love the historic buildings, a lot of brings up a lot of nostalgia and memories and excitement and possibly some memories of California and Disneyland. Well, that is the reason why. There's Harper Goff Alley, it's beautiful. There's a wonderful mural painted about him. But yes, Disneyland has some inspiration from Fort Collins, Colorado. Now this is wild. Now Fort Collins was ranked the number four beer, best beer city in all of the United States by USA Today, but it actually creates and, uh, and uh, <laughs> brews 70% of the craft beer in all of Colorado. Now we've got New Belgium, Anheuser-Busch, and, and I, so I don't know kind of the distinguishing factor in some of the articles it looked like it was, it was suggesting that Anheuser was part of that, but I'm, I'm not sure. But regardless, New Belgium, Odell's, Saltwater, uh, plenty is why horse and dragon, which was on our podcast. So if you haven't watched that, the Fort Collins fellas podcast, go have a look. It's a wonderful podcast about a company brewing in Fort Collins really as a lifestyle choice and just pouring back into the community. But 70% of the craft beer is brewed in Fort Collins, Colorado. Now this isn't in Fort Collins, but it was just our neighbor to the West at one point. And there's an underwater city just to the West of us underneath the Horse Tooth Reservoir. So if you like to go scuba diving, you can get down in there and see some of the old buildings and things of that nature, where it was a quarry kind of town, Stout, Colorado, with a population of 47 and one half, which is kind of a, a joke to be, uh, you know, to kind of just joke around. But now it is the home of Horse Tooth Reservoir, which is obviously one of our favorite recreational activities in Northern Colorado, Fort Collins, boating, swimming, kayaking, paddle boarding, whatever, dam riding the hills, the dams, all that good stuff. But there was once a city of Stout, Colorado underneath Horse Tooth Reservoir. Now this one, we were really fighting to be number one, but Old Town Square was ranked as the number four best public town square in all of the United States. So yes, it got some inspiration from Disneyland, or Disneyland got it some inspiration from Old Town, but there's just been a ton of development, renovation, investment back into Old Town really since 1980s. We had Bill Wright on the, the podcast, Matt Robinall on the podcast, and they talked about how at one point, really downtown Fort Collins almost wasn't what it was today. It was kind of a dangerous place, but business owners got together, developed, and then in the early 2000s, there was a major renovation, moving the stage all the way back to the north side of the uh, plaza, adding a water fountain, and it is just wonderful. Very safe, very clean, well-maintained, mom and pop shops. Go check out Old Town Square as a number four best public town square in all of the United States. Now, this is one of the big reasons why people move here is lifestyle and the desire to be outdoors. And Fort Collins is one of five platinum rated bike communities in all of the United States. It has over 280 miles of protected bike paths, a wonderful paved trail. I've created a video about all of the bike trails in Fort Collins and I rode over 30 miles with just barely touching you know, main streets or busy streets, but really I didn't need to. I could have gone up and down the Pooter Trail and that's gonna take you from Bellevue to Greeley, north, south, whether that's on the Power Trail, that's gonna have an underpass at Harmony connecting so you don't have to go over McMurray anymore and that's gonna be wonderful in early 2025. Mason Trail north and south, east, west, 
east west on spring creek trail or fossil creek trail there is just wonderful trail systems throughout fort collins and as i mentioned earlier if you really want to get after it now this is on major roads busy roads but it's a wonderful very difficult ride but the dams at horse tooth are wonderful like north to south south to north whatever you want to do it it's going to kick your butt but you got to make sure you're you're aware of vehicles and all that good stuff but a platinum rated bicycle community is Fort Collins, Colorado. Now I'm gonna have to read my notes on this one because I'm not a big festival person, but there are tons of festivals in Fort Collins. So if you wanna get outdoors active and kind of just see what's going on, plenty of opportunities. So let's dive in real quick on some of these. We have got, well really our, our farmer's market from May to October and then the winter's farmer market, Jan January through April. We went and checked it out at the Foothills Mall. It is it, great, lots of, knickknacks and, and lotions and produce and all this good stuff. And it takes over the Foothills Mall and really is, is super active and, and, uh, and sought out. Oh shoot, that's our next one. So I'll jump back to that here in a second. Uh, the festivals, here we go. Uh, Foco MX, Taste of Fort Collins, Earth Day, Art Week, 4th of July Parade and Fireworks, Foco Fondo. Now a buddy of mine reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do this. And I was like, heck no, it's a, it's a bike off trail system. It's it's grueling, but it's fun. You don't have to get super aggressive with it. Uh, New Belgium's a big supporter of this. So it's all around beer and breweries and all that good stuff. There's summertime concert series down in Old Town, Old Town Square, uh, Tour de Fat, Tour de Corgi, holiday lighting ceremony, and the Fort Collins Peach Festival put on by Rotary. So there are tons of festivals, lots of activities that you can see yourself getting involved with. And really the community kind of pours into it. Which the next one, you could call Fort Collins, Fort Collins Fresh, and that is the farmer's markets running both uh, January through April for the winter's farmer's market and then May through October. And there's different locations. There's one off of uh, Oak Street and kind of by the Larimer County Courthouse building and one over by my house on LeMay and Harmony. So there's different locations for the outdoor farmer's markets. And then the indoors farmer's markets at the Foothills Mall, very active, lots of people going to it and having fun and enjoying themselves. Lots of produce and also different knickknacks, uh, creatives, breads, you know, all of the fun stuff. So if you want to, you absolutely have an opportunity to go to lots of different farmer's markets within Fort Collins year round. Now this is a fun one. Fort Collins has something called Pianos Around Town. And essentially the Bohemian Foundation puts on and uh, allows for painters to go and paint pianos that are absolutely playable all around downtown Fort Collins. And each year they pick out a different set of painters to come in and create works of art on these pianos. And these pianos are all around downtown Fort Collins. And you could absolutely see somebody playing right by the fountains. And they can be very, very, there's a range. You can have my kids who jump on the piano and, and pound away. Or you could have a professional piano player go and really just put on a show at a random time on a professionally painted piano where when all the kids and dogs are playing around the, the fountain in the summer. So a lot of cool things about that, but it's a unique little deal that we're also gonna pump into our next one, which is our electrical boxes around Fort Collins. There are over 400 electrical boxes painted around Fort Collins, which really just is cool. It, it portrays into what is Fort Collins. It's like this vibe. They want to present clean, a lifestyle, culture, community, beauty, art, music, just so many different things that are important to Fort Collins. And there's over 400 electrical boxes that, you know, used to just be these green boxes that, I mean, weren't ugly, but they weren't pretty. And now they're gorgeous and kids absolutely love them. They see them, I love them. Lots of different styles and techniques, um, you know, absolutely beautiful. And let's just call it a spade a spade. Fort Collins is absolutely an outdoor enthusiast, you know, wonderland. A lot of places in Colorado are. Vail, Breckenridge, Keystone, Aspen, Boulder, you know, a lot of different places in and around Northern Colorado, up and down the Front Range, Grand Junction, you know, just a very, huge focus on outdoor lifestyle. And when we work with clients moving from around the country uh, and the world, that's probably the common denominator of why they're wanting to move here is we wanna be walking, biking, going rafting, hiking, 
mountain climbing, and there's just no shortage of activities. And I would say you have that within a 15 to 25 minute drive at any time, whether you wanna kayak up or, or raft down the pooter, uh, go rock climbing, going hiking at Laurie State Park or Horse Tooth Mountain, Bobcat Ridge, you know, or there's the indoor at Ascent Studio. So if you wanna be a, a pretty strong rock climber, you could do that year round. And with, uh, you know, such great weather and a climate, which we'll talk about here shortly as well, Fort Collins and Northern Colorado and Colorado in general is absolutely an outdoor enthusiast dreamland. Now we're talking about, I would say mostly fun things and good things, but I would say with the Denver airport being an hour away, if you're driving to that airport or commuting down to Denver every day or you know multiple times a week to DIA and back, it is an hour away. E470 is not getting any less expensive. I absolutely take it. It could be anywhere between 15 to $20 one way. And so that's 15 to $20 back. For me, it is absolutely worth it because you're not dealing with traffic, I-25, and it just cuts right through. But the commute could very well be 50 to 60 minutes long, depending on traffic. With our new three lanes that are going from Fort Collins to Berthoud, and soon, as of 20, they're starting the road uh, construction now, but, and it will be finished in 2029, we will have three lanes all the way to Denver, which will relieve a significant amount of traffic on I-25. But DIA, which is a huge airport, number three busiest airport in the world, is just an hour away. So yes, you can pretty much get to anywhere in the world from DIA, if not one stop, and then you're there, one layover, uh, but it is an hour away, so take that into consideration. And here's another one that's, I would say, you know, contested, but there's a Reddit thread, which I'm not a huge Reddit person, but people always send me things. And I would say, we're gonna do a hot takes video here very soon. But one of the major things on that Reddit thread of like, you know, call Fort Collins what it is, is the food is mid. And while I'm not, you know, super young, I'm not super old by any means, uh, staying on top of the, the language because I got three kiddos moving up and so I'll have to stay on top with what the heck they're saying. But a lot of people are talking about how Fort Collins food scene is pretty mid. And I've talked about that in like the downsides of living in Fort Collins, Colorado video. But you also have a person that kind of reaches in and, and, and kind of chimes and says, actually, it's a small city, 170, 180,000 people. You can't expect uh, like a Houston where you have tons of different cultures and backgrounds and, and people pouring into and starting different restaurants and cuisines. We only have 170, 180,000 people. And with respect to that, it's actually a pretty decent food scene. Not a ton of choice, but a lot of them are saying, hey, go check out the food trucks on North College. And I haven't really eaten a, lot, a ton of those. I've eaten a ton of food trucks, but I would say that uh, some that are there find their way to food truck rallies, but the one on Jack's and along North College, uh, definitely a good place to check out for food trucks, but the Fort Collins food scene isn't amazing if you're coming from a place with a million plus people, but for a smaller community, it isn't too terrible. Now let's jump back into a little bit more fun things. One of the things that when, if you drive through or focus on moving to Fort Collins or, or take a trip here and try to figure out, do we wanna to move to Fort Collins? Do we like it? Do we understand it? One of the things that you might not notice, but you're like, why is it so beautiful? What is, what is it? Well, maybe it's that the utility lines are all undergrounded. Now, not all of them, not 100%. There's some downtown still that has some above, but basically in the 60s, Fort Collins underground all of their utilities line. And the majority of our growth, in the 60s, we had 20,000 people or so, and now we have 180. So the majority of our growth has been post-1960, and a lot of those areas do not have above ground utility lines. So you'll see this I line that's absolutely gorgeous and wonderful that isn't intruded by these old wooden posts with hanging wire, you know, uh, wires and electrical lines, but the utility lines are undergrounded and you wouldn't just notice it. Like, Why do I think it's beautiful? Well, that could be one of the reasons. Along with, as we talked about earlier, the medians are absolutely well-maintained, trees, shrubs, a lot of zero scape or, or focused on drought resistant plants because that's a big push for Fort Collins is to be environmentally friendly. And we wanna have, you know, um, our, our, our push to, uh, zero 80% reduction of carbon emissions by 2030 with a carbon neutral footprint by 2050. Um, you know, just a really big focus on that. And a lot of that is our medians are gorgeous, well-maintained, no trash, no no trash in the gutters, no overgrown weed, weeds, just a lot of cool, small details. That's what makes this city so amazing. And in my opinion, it's the small details, our alleyways, our medians, our electrical boxes, our utilities being undergrounded. Those are just things that you, 
you have to put it into a full picture of why do I think it's so wonderful? And when you think about it that way, you're like, got it, makes sense. It's the details. 300 days of sun in Fort Collins. So yes, we do get winter storms. We're between seven to 10 storms of two plus inches, which equates to 10 to 14 snow shovels. But I was just talking to a client that was moving and I was, we had a, like a late spring snowstorm. And on Saturday, we went out and sledded or went out sledding on Saturday. And it was wonderful, like, th like I think it was like three to six inches, but plenty of snow, good sledding. And on Sunday, that hill was completely green. No snow, just little, little tracks that might've been like, you know, packed down and things of that nature, but generally no snow. And with that is the 300 days of sun, uh, sunshine. Now our altitude is a little bit higher. I'm a bald head. I'm also redhead at one point. Let's see, I don't know, you can see a lot of it's gray now. But I, I was a redhead at one point, fair complexion. So you gotta make sure that you're wearing sunscreen. A uh, little hint, a dermatologist that I went to said that no matter what sunscreen you use, after an hour and a half, it's basically a cliff of its of its protection. And after two hours, no matter the type of sunscreen, it goes away. So two hours, make sure that you're reapplying that sunscreen. It doesn't matter what type, it just is important to put on a type that gets well with your skin, not oily, all that kind of stuff. But super important, high altitude, 300 days of sun, which is amazing with a dry, arid climate because yeah, we get 90 degrees, but you're not sweating and you don't have sorry for lack of a better word, swamp ass as soon as you walk out the door, you're gonna get to enjoy it, have a dry heat, and that goes as well for when it's cold. You're not gonna be bundled up, freezing cold. It could be 10 degrees, and if the sun's out, it's actually not too bad. Contrary to belief, Fort Collins is really not growing. We're gonna have another couple of videos coming out about you know the growth of Windsor, the flatlining of Fort Collins, really since 2020, our population's only grown by about a half a percent, depending on which estimates. But over the last year, it's relatively flatlined, which means our net migration out is the same as our net migration in. And that's super interesting. Now, the surrounding areas of Fort Collins, Timnath, Windsor, Wellington, Loveland, Berthoud, Johnstown, those are all areas that are seeing pretty dramatic population growth where people maybe, whether they can't afford to live in Fort Collins or wanna be closer to Denver or like the east side of I-25 with the layout, be a part of a smaller community of like Windsor with 40,000 people. Regardless, there's this misconception of Fort Collins population is just skyrocketing and, and stop coming, don't come here. Well, over the last three years, it's it's relatively flatlined and our population is expected to grow to 20, 250,000 people by 2050 to 2060. So we still have a long ways to go. We have about 70,000 people that we can add to our population. A lot of that's gonna be on the Northeast at Montava, the Southeast, a lot of the growth is gonna be on the Northeast side of Fort Collins and possibly some on the Southwest. But that being said, our population kind of isn't what people expect are, are, are kind of hearing the narrative. It's actually a relatively flatlined. All right, again, it's calling a spade a spade. Our, our public transportation is weak in Fort Collins. I don't know if I could, I gotta commit. At some point I gotta just commit and be like, all right, I'm gonna do a week. I did a week long of riding my bike through Fort Collins and it was tough because I like to go to the gym in the morning and, and all of that, but I did it and I could see how people could do it or at least kind of make their weeks accommodate that. But I have also not done like, hey, I'm only gonna take public transportation this entire week. Maybe I should do that video. That's, if you want me to make that video, comment below, tell me to make it, give me ideas. But there was a half cent sales tax that just passed where 50% of that was gonna go to parks and recreation, 50% to uh, climate friendly, and 50% to public transportation. Or sorry, 50% to parks and rec, 25% to climate, 25% to public transportation to try to get transport, the max transit line. We're gonna see a max transit line going along e Elizabeth all the way out to Overland to CSU. Um, the max transit line is gonna move north all the way along North College eventually. So we are pushing to try to get our public transportation better. It's not amazing, it is free. Let me repeat that, it is free, the transport, max transit line, but we are gonna see some capital uh, infusion in that and hopefully get a little bit better a little bit sooner. Now, I did do a, a podcast with Darren Atterbury on the Fort Collins fellows and he was very strong in his comment that if anyone tells you the backbone of Fort Collins is still not Colorado State University, they are completely being misled. And Colorado State University is a tier R1 Carnegie research institution and 
D1 division school with a decent football team. Okay, I actually think really great football team, uh, or sorry, great basketball team. Football team's coming up. They've got a lot of, this NIL thing is, I can't imagine being a coach in it. That's gotta be super difficult. But Colorado State University, one of our biggest employers of Fort Collins with 30,000 plus students coming in and out. So you can see a huge transition of people through the summer and then leaving. So our roads, our, our, our traffic is not nearly what it is during our fall and spring semesters at CSU, but it's a, it's a pivotal part of Fort Collins, very strong tier one, R1 uh, research, Carnegie uh, institution, division one football, not a power five conference, but very strong vet school, $200 million vets, uh, vet buildings being built to put out more veterinarians, um, business engineering, uh, a lot of great, great colleges there at the University of Colorado, Colorado State University. So we are a small community. Yeah, we're under we're under 200,000 people, but we have some great local amenities. Again, I'm gonna read my notes here because I don't wanna miss anything. But if you're looking to go to a professional sports game or maybe a huge concert or a big comedian act, you're probably gonna find yourself going about 45, 60 minutes south to Denver. But if you are looking at having just fun on a weekly you know, basis, there's great opportunities to stick around Fort Collins and, and here are just some of them. Gardens on Spring Creek, Fort Collins Museum of Contemporary Art, Comedy Fort, the Aggie, Washington, Washington's, the Armory, the Avery House, Lincoln Center, CSU Center for Performing Arts, the Discovery Museum, all of downtown and old town Fort Collins, and many more local amenities that you could find yourself enjoying. And even if that's not the case, there's TPC Colorado for golfers, uh, the main event for kind of bowling and arcades in Windsor. There's just Northern Colorado is definitely seen as a big area that shares, not necessarily in the sales tax, but in the amenities that are drawn to the area of Northern Colorado. We're getting down to our last three, so we're gonna jump right into them. Again, one of the main things that people are moving to Fort Collins is the lifestyle and culture. I was just talking to a friend and you know we were just in Los Angeles. I love the West Coast style, kind of sweats, t-shirt, kind of laid back, but very nice clothing materials, uh, but definitely laid back, untucked, versus the East Coast, kind of uh, suit, jacket, nice, tight, um, well-maintained, well-fitted, uh, you know, very professional quality and, and different things of that nature. Well, Colorado, you know, isn't either. It is get your chuckas out, your plaid shirts, your your hats, your, you know, grow a scruffy beard, let the hair grow, but very professional, very smart people are living here, moving here and making Fort Collins, Northern Colorado their home. In fact, when the Pooter School District was going kind of through, going through their consolidation process, a buddy of mine who was gonna be impacted, very smart individual, moved here from out of state, British intelligence, British military, works for a Fortune 500 company in data. And he's like, he sent, he put together his 12 page document that he sent onto the uh, school board of, uh, the board of directors and was like, listen, we're very smart. We know what we're doing. We're not gonna roll over. We're gonna fight this. We're gonna create things. And it kind of just goes to show that, and he absolutely rides his bike out to our guys meeting on Tuesday mornings. And it is a lifestyle, a culture. It's laid back, have fun, work hard, yes, but go have a beer at lunch, enjoy the outdoors, go to the festivals, go to the farmer's markets, go rafting on the pooter, go play in the pooter play park, hiking, rock climbing. It is a lifestyle driven community. Culture is very laid back. And so if you're coming here, make sure you're waving to people, smiling and being friendly. Keep the nature and culture and vibe of Fort Collins great. The last two are a little fun, but Colorado's only national and scenic water river is in Fort Collins, the Cache La Poudre River. Um, storage of the powder, you know, there's uh, French trappers hid the powder. That's how the river got named. It is a vital part of our economy, of our ecosystem. Tons of fun, tons of activity coming all the way up Colorado uh, Highway 14. You can take it from Fort Collins all the way to Walden, take it all the way down. It's where I like to go when I'm going up to Steamboat. I'd much rather go to Steamboat versus Keystone Breckenridge and take I-70. It's a nightmare. The Poudre Canyon, wonderful. It's beautiful. It's a scenic highway and follows the Poudre River all the way up. But the Poudre River is something that you could go fishing on, hiking uh, nearby, jumping off and swimming in Picnic Rock, kayaking, 
just sit by the Poudre Pay Park with your feet in the water while your kids are messing around there on the beach. Just lots of different activity. And uh, the Poudre Trail that rides up and down it, like I said, from Bellevue all the way to Greeley. It's just a wonderful thing to have in Fort Collins, Northern Colorado. And it kind of plays back into that culture and lifestyle uh, that we talked a little bit earlier about. Now our last one, our 21st truth about Fort Collins is we have a drive-in movie theater. And as small and stupid as that sounds, it's been a vital part of my upbringing at, you know, being a kid here in Fort Collins. And I remember going to the Holiday Twin drive-in movie theater and this really old rundown candy shack, but just the vibe was, was wonderful. Going in, getting candy, posting up, popping the trunk, watching a movie with the uh, foothills right behind you, sun setting right there. It's truly amazing and gorgeous. And there's been plenty of times where financially they truly had to consider shutting down, but the city of Fort Collins pushed together, came together and said, no, this is a special place. And COVID was actually one of the deals that helped them because they could put on outdoor concerts and outdoor movies and, and they could still operate within kind of a, you know, a realm of safety and protocols, but allow people to come have fun and watch outdoor movies. And now they've reinvested in it. There's good food, good burgers. Um, it's not a rundown shack anymore. They've got sunscreens up there so you can stand in line and, and get your stuff. And and two big movie theaters, uh, screens on the movie theater, playing, I believe, during a specific time of the year, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, on different times, kind of the earlier part of the year, and kind of the late April, early May, um, and then June, July, August, they let it go for basically the entire week. So the Holiday Twin Drive-In Theater, it's special to Fort Collins. Go check it out. It's one of the things that really makes Fort Collins great. One of the many things, like I just talked about the other 20 items on here. now. Talk to me about what is your favorite thing or favorite truth about Fort Collins that maybe I didn't hint on or talk about, or again, discuss for possibly a new video coming up. Like I talked to you about the public transportation. I think that'd be a really fun one, difficult, but for me at least, and we'll see where that goes. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care.